Hey everyone, today I'm showing you how to stretch those holiday supplies. So here we have this snowflake background stencil from Honeybee Stamps. This is a two layer stencil, but we're just gonna be using one to create the backgrounds for our cards. So I'm taking a piece of A2 size cardstock here, four and a quarter by five and a half. And you can see I've created a little hinge on my stencil there by using a piece of pixie tape. And now I'm coming in with some Distress Grip Paste. This is the opaque paste. And I'm gonna run that through the stencil here with my palette knife. Now the reason I created a hinge at the top there is because this is gonna make it super easy for me to mass produce these cards. So once I get everything done, I can just go ahead and pull out my piece of cardstock, slide a new one in under there, and then put down my grip paste on the next piece. So I decided to make five cards because my husband needed some thank you cards to send out to his coworkers. So once I had those all done, I set them off to the side and I pulled out the Distress Rock Candy Glitter and I'm gonna add this to just a couple of the ones that I created. So I'm gonna leave two without, but three of them I'm adding the glitter to. And you want to move kind of quickly. You don't want to let your paste completely dry or anything like that because then the glitter is not going to stick to it. But certainly I was able to do all five of these and then even go and wash my stencil and the paste was still wet enough that I could add the glitter to it. For the other two, I waited for them to completely dry, and now I'm coming in here with some Frosted Juniper Distress Mica Spray. I just sprayed the background a couple of times, so you can see there, look, you can see the snowflakes, but then you also have that gorgeous mica spray. Once everything was dry, I cut down all of my panels. You can see I have all five of them there. They look so pretty. And now I'm gonna come in and create the main elements for my cards. And I'm gonna show you how to do this in a quick and easy way so that you can make multiples. I'm gonna start out here with the dies. These are the watercolor pines stamps and dies. And I'm gonna pick out three of the trees because on, you'll see most of my cards, I'm gonna put three trees on. A couple of them, I do decide to put four and you'll see that later. But I'm gonna pick out three trees here that I like. Just make sure that I'm picking out the die that coordinates with the stamp. I'm going for one tall tree and two short trees because that is going to create a nice look on the front of the card. Once I have them picked out, I'm gonna cut them out of an A2 size piece of cardstock and that is going to create my jig for easy stamping. You'll see in just a moment. But I did cut out many of those trees. You can see them up at the top. I cut out five of each of the trees, but there is the jig that I'm talking about. And what makes this really easy is having some kind of sticky mat in your stamping platform. Here I have the waffle flower mini mat and so it's sticky and I can just stick those die cuts right down into the negative spaces that were created where I cut them out. I'm only gonna have to position my stamps once and then after that I'll be able to pull out the stamp die cut, put a fresh one in and stamp again. When you're doing this, you do wanna make sure that you have ample room around your images. So don't die cut your pieces too close together because then it'll be hard to stamp in different colors. And this is a fun way to do this because then you're not getting bored when you're mass producing. You can see I've already done a few here now, but I'm gonna come in and show you one at a time how easy it is to do especially once my stamp was used a couple times, it started stamping just beautifully. So again, if you ever have any issues with your stamp, just stamp them a few times because stamps sometimes need a little bit of conditioning before they really start stamping nicely. And so I'm doing this nice mint color and then I have a real bold blue and then a yellow green. So now you can see there, I can easily come in with my ink pad and get the ink on the stamp without getting it on any of the other stamps. So that's why you wanna keep that in mind. 
but you could make tons of these in all kinds of different colors. I had thought about creating them in rainbow colors because I love rainbows, but these weren't cards for me. They were cards for my husband's coworkers, and I just wanted to make them feel like a nice, fun, wintry scene. So you can get a lot out of these stamps and dies. You can create beautiful holiday cards, but you can also create gorgeous, just general wintertime cards. And they're going to work for anything, for birthdays, for thank yous, for those Christmas cards, whatever it is. And I thought this would be fun as well to make a gift set. So if you're looking for any last minute gifts to create for someone on your list, you could create a set of winter thank you cards. I'm sure that would be much appreciated. So you can see here, I did decide to come back in. I die cut two extra of those and I did a different shade of green. Now I'm using my quickie glue pen here and I'm just running it along the tops of some of the tree branches here and there. I'm not going to do all of the trees. I'm just doing the trees that I'm going to be using on the background pieces we created earlier with the rock candy glitter because I'm going to go ahead and use the rock candy glitter here on the trees so it looks like we have some beautiful snowfall that has just landed on the tops of those tree branches. So once you get all of your glue, you don't have to do these one at a time, but I wouldn't say try doing them all because your glue is going to dry too quickly for anything to adhere to it. But I would say doing a couple at a time uh, is very easy to do. All I did was run my glue pen, like I said, along those branches, grab my reverse tweezers here, and then I can just sprinkle that glitter on there and kind of tap it off and set the tree aside to dry. Then once I have done all three of those, I can pour my glitter right back into the container and start doing my next set of three. And the really nice thing about the rock candy glitter, if you haven't ever used it before, is that it's not like your typical glitter that kind of sticks to everything. You know, it gets um, kind of like stuck to your skin and your clothes and your work surface. The rock candy glitter, for whatever reason, doesn't stick like that. So it's really easy to put back in the jar. And it also looks phenomenal. It's not an overpowering glitter, but it just creates this nice frosty look. So now I'm going to put together the card. I cut out two additional pieces of cardstock that are the same size as my cut down background piece so that I can add some dimension without making it too high so that it's not easy to mail because these are all definitely going to be mailed. So that creates just that little bit of dimension that I feel like makes the card more 3D and just sort of pop and look beautiful. And so I've got my three trees here. I'm going to start out by gluing them all together. And there's lots of different ways you could put together your cards. You're going to see all five of my cards look slightly different in the end because some of them I glued the trees together and then I popped all of it up with foam tape. On some of them I only popped one tree up with foam tape. I even changed the orientation of one of my cards so I did it as landscape instead of portrait. So when you're mass producing cards like this just think about little ways that you can change the cards up to keep yourself engaged. Of course some people love to do mass producing and they don't have that issue um, but I get I tend to get bored after making the same card to maybe three times so I like to change it up to keep myself engaged in the process so once I had all three of the trees glued together on this one I just came in with some scrap pieces of cardstock so that way I could make the entire back level so that way when I put my foam tape my thin foam tape on the back there I know that everything is going to be level and it's going to look really nice on my card. Now you if you want something that's really flat and doesn't have any of the extra dimension, you also could just glue duplicates of the die cut trees on the back 
or you could just put your trees directly onto the background. You certainly don't have to add all that extra dimension. Uh, it's just something that I love. I think it really creates a beautiful look. So I've got my background piece here. I added some glue and now I'm just gluing it to the center of an A2 size card. I toyed with adding a piece of pattern paper back behind it, but I didn't wanna make these too complicated. I wanted them to be pretty straightforward, pretty clean and simple, and to just bring some nice frosty kind of goodness to the recipient. I did use the super cute mini messages holiday stamps. These are great for lots of different kinds of cards. And I was really pleased to see that there's even a thank you so much in there. So I went ahead and heat embossed those in white on black cardstock. And now I'm using the mini messages dies in order to cut them all out and those work with all of the mini messages stamp sets that honeybee comes out with so here are the final five cards oh these just they're just yummy you guys i think they look so beautiful and wintry and they're perfect to send during the holidays or any other time. So I hope you guys picked up some tips and tricks today. Please be sure to like and subscribe as well as hit that notification bell so that I can continue bringing you more crafty content in the future. Until next time, happy crafting!